Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. Today we're going to be looking at creating this interesting text behind glass effect in Motion. And this is unapologetically derived from a recent tutorial by the incredible Andrew Kramer at videocopilot.net. Um, my excuse for that is um, I'm rubbish at thinking up ideas of my own, obviously. Um, it's also interesting to take a, uh, an After Effects project and see how that pans out in motion. And um, there's a few uh, hints and tips and tricks that I've uh, introduced uh, that make this a little bit different. It might uh, be interesting in its own right. I've got a, a new project. This is 1920-1080. 24 frames a second and the duration is 10 seconds uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in my glass texture there we go uh, and I've made this texture 1920 1080 and there are good reasons for that I won't explain but it makes the whole displacement uh, technique much easier if you've done it that way okay I'm going to Next, create um, a light, like so. Switch to 3D. Let's move that up in frame like that, and maybe zoom it out a bit on Z, so it's a little bit closer to us. And I'm going to set the full off start to 250, like that. And I'm going to set the uh, blend mode of that glass texture to overlay. I'm going to take the text tool, uh, and type some text. Psycho seems to be quite appropriate for this. Uh, although you could do, I don't know, detective agency or lots of um, things you could do uh, with this effect. Well, I like to think so anyway. There we go. So I've got my text and I'm going to move that out into a new group like so. And I'm going to make that group 2D and I'm going to use command shift forward square bracket uh, quite a mouthful to send it to the back of the composition uh, and I'm going to take the text change its color to something like that and I'm going to reduce its opacity to about 50% let's zoom in so we get a better idea maybe I'll make it a little bit brighter just for now there we go next i'm going to create a new group above that and put it inside make that one 2d as well um, i'm having to switch these groups all the time because the light um, automatically makes them makes them 3d okay now i want to get my displacement happening so that's the texture that gets applied to my text to make it look as though it's being seen through the glass. So I'm going to come to the library, filters, and I'm going to type glass, and I'm going to use the glass distortion filter. And I'm going to apply it to that group above the text. Come to the inspector, and into this image well, I'm going to drag my glass texture like that. I'm going to drag the amount up to 500. Now. I don't know whether you can see, but that really isn't looking right. That doesn't look as though it's being um, displaced by that texture at all. And if we turn on the overlay, you can see what's happening, which is that the distortion is actually looking at my text shape, not the full 1080 frame. And in order to get around that, I need to bump this group up to 1080. And I'm going to do that by adding a color solid to it and move that to the back of the group and let's turn down its opacity uh, and now you can see the difference between that uh, and that if I move that text you can see that that's whether you can but if you look closely you can see that's being displaced correctly by the glass exactly what we want whereas turn it off and it's not so there you go handy little trick 
Um, now, this colour solid, I don't really want to be seeing it at all. I've turned its opacity right down, but that's actually not what I want. Uh, and I can get around that by simply toggling on the Preserve Opacity switch, like so. And now that's completely see-through, but it's still doing what we need it to do in terms of the displacement. Uh, I'm just come to the distortion. I'm just going to change that softness to two, just to give it a little bit more smoothness. Then I now want to start animating my text so it zooms up towards us. I'm going to come to this group and I am going to come to the Z position and add a ramp behavior. I'm going to set the start value to minus a thousand. Come back to my properties, come to my wire rotation, add parameter behavior ramp, set the start value to 45. There we go. It rotates and zooms up. That's all very nice. Uh, we want to end three seconds before the end of the sequence. And in order to do that, we just need to add an end offset of 72 frames, which, as I'm sure you know, is three seconds at 24 frames a second. There we go. And now we want to create the effect of the text being progressively blurred the further away it is from the glass. And that would mean that the, the P becomes unblurred sooner than the O, for example. Uh, now, Andrew Kramer has a clever trick to do this, which um, involves using text animation. And we could do exactly the same thing using a sequence text behavior. It's, it's absolutely identical uh, technique. But um, there are limitations to that, clever as it is, um, and doesn't look entirely convincing to me. Uh, and the other factor is that it won't work if your text is more than two lines. So if you had detective agency on two lines, it wouldn't look right, his technique. So my technique is to do something slightly different, which is to use filters. I'm going to type grad, gradient blur, and I'm going to add it to that group that has the glass distortion. I'm going to drag this point over here, uh, this point over here, come to the inspector. I'm going to turn the amount up to 100. And now you'll see that if I drag this point across, it progressively becomes unblurred in a very nice, plausible way. So I'm going to animate that I'm going to set my point to X position, which is the right hand side. I'm going to set it to one. And then I'm going to come to my left hand point, which is point one X, not complicated. Uh, and I'm going to add, set it to zero, add a ramp behavior, start at zero, end at point nine nine, which is almost one, but not quite. And then you'll see that that moves across exactly as we'd like. I'm going to add a 30 frame end offset so it coincides better with the end of the text animation. Uh, next we want to add our text to a 3D group uh, in order that it can be affected by the lighting and by the camera when we come to add with the camera. So I'm going to make a new group, Command Shift N, that is 3D. I wouldn't want to keep it that way. And I'm going to take this group, which has got my text and various bits and pieces, and I'm going to drag it inside that. So that's all 2D inside 3D. So it's doing all the things that I want, but it will be affected by the lighting and the camera. Now I want to create an environment at the back. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to create a new group. Yet again, make it 2D. And I'm going to send it to the back using command shift forward square bracket and in this group I'm going to make a couple of objects the first is a rectangle hit R draw out a tall thin rectangle like that then select C and draw out a circle like that for some reason 
that group has gone back to 3D and I don't want it to. There we go. Uh, I'm going to shift select the circle and the rectangle and I'm going to set their opacity to 50% and the feather to 300. Notice how useful it is to be able to shift select two similar objects and affect their common properties uh, in one hit. Very useful. Right, uh, I'm going to select my rectangle and hit L, which will make a replicator. Turn on my overlays and drag out the replicator till it's sort of more or less covering the frame like so. Come to the properties. I only want five columns is fine. I only want one row like that. And I'm going to send those rectangles. I'm going to send them back to minus 1500. The idea of this is to create um, some parallax. We just increase the size a bit more like that. Uh, come to my circle, do the same thing, hit L. This time I'm going to set the arrangement to random fill and increase the number of points to six. And let's drag out that in a similar way. And this one I'm going to send back to minus a thousand. And now well, let's make that group 3D so it's properly lit. There we go. Now it's sitting behind everything. Uh, we can't really see it. Uh, that's because I want to add a new light to illuminate behind the glass and to illuminate my background. So I'm going to duplicate my existing light and I'm going to move it back so it's behind the glass. You can see the difference there, infrared behind. I'm going to increase the fall off start to a thousand like that and the fall off maybe to four. Now those circles are much too bright. Let's come to back to the circle and reduce that opacity down to about 20. That's looking better I think. Next we need to add a camera to make it all come alive. Hit camera and I'm going to animate the camera it's using behaviors. Uh, first of all I want to move it in a bit. Minus 370 on Z. I'm going to come to camera motion, use dolly, and I'm going to dolly forward 650. Next I'm going to add camera sweep, like so. Set that to X, and I'm going to sweep just 25 degrees. And in order to counteract the, that movement, I'm going to add a throw, and I'm going to throw it 35 on Y, like so and add one more sweep behavior. This time leave it to Y and go from minus 12 degrees to plus 12 degrees. And my animation overall looks like that. And you can see the nice parallax we're getting with the background and everything's looking fairly good. Let's uh, come to my text layer. Let's make that much darker, that color to we're down to about there. And let's reduce the opacity down to maybe 25, so it looks more dramatic. There's only one more thing to do, uh, and that's to add a little bit of colour correction. And I'm going to use a cheap trick, which is to use a colour solid in a new group. Drag that out. Set that group to 2D. Set the blend mode to overlay. And the opacity down to 10. And finally, I'm just going to add a blur to that text layer. Gaussian blur. And a value of about 10, just so it's a bit more diffused. Zoom in a bit so you can see. There we go. A little bit more diffused by the glass. Anyway, there we go. I hope that's been an interesting tutorial. If you're interested in more of the same, please do check out my YouTube channel where there are loads more existing tu motion tutorials and there will be more to come. So thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.